The second lie that the acceptance that abortion acceptance depends on is that well somehow having an abortion is better than giving birth for women. And that's the lie that my organization has worked on for 50 years. We've been around since Roe versus Wade. We're OBGYN doctors. We see what abortion does to women. It destroys women. And the medical literature is very clear. But there's three big ways, among, among multiple ways, but three big ways that abortion destroys women. The first is that abortion increases a woman's risk of giving birth to a very, very tiny preemie. Why? Because abortion hurts her womb. It damages her womb. And women who abort are at greatly increased risk of having very, very tiny preemies just at the edge of life because the womb can't hold the baby. Remember, there's a chronic inflammation set up inside the mom's womb. And we've known this. There's actually 170 studies over 50 years that have shown this. Abortion increases the risk of preterm birth and subsequent pregnancy. The second way that abortion hurts women is that abortion increases a woman's risk of breast cancer and subsequent pregnancy. It's not all abortion and it's not all breast cancer. What happens is in going from a never pregnant breast to a breast that makes milk, in that first pregnancy, you have a huge growth of breast tissue, but it's immature type one and two tissue. It's tissue that cancer cells arise from because it's immature, it's not fully differentiated. In order for that immature breast tissue to become fully differentiated, to make milk, to be permanently cancer resistant, that tissue has to be exposed to a hormone that comes from the woman's womb, starting at 20 weeks and after. So by 20 weeks, almost all the tissue in, in the woman's breast in her first pregnancy, almost all of it is this immature type 1 and 2 tissue. But by 35 weeks, you've got about half the breast that's now able to make milk, and milk-producing tissue is permanently cancer-resistant. If she brings that baby all the way to term, to 40 weeks, 95% of her breast is going to be cancer-resistant. So that first pregnancy is the single most important determinant in a woman's future risk of breast cancer. Most abortions happen in this country to first pregnancies. I know from research with other colleagues looking at the entire Medicaid database, you know, where we were able to look at women who are on Medicaid and their pregnancy outcomes and what happens to them. It turns out that women who abort a first pregnancy, a third of them never ever have a term pregnancy. It's a event which changes their life. That means two thirds of women who abort will go on to have a baby. And it's the timing of that baby that affects their breast cancer risk as well. If they abort and then a year later they have a baby, they have just converted most of their cancer susceptible tissue into milk production, cancer resistant. So those women who have an atonement pregnancy quickly after the abortion, they don't tend to get breast cancer. It's the women who abort and then delay and delay and delay and they never have children. Those are the women who have increased risk of breast cancer. And finally, what we know from the medical literature is that abortion increases a woman's risk of adverse mental health outcomes. Well, what does that mean? It means suicide. It means drug abuse. It means depression, major depression requiring hospitalization. Why? Because women are hardwired to bond to their babies and to grieve those babies when they die. One of the saddest uh, papers, research papers I ever read was a paper that looked at women who were waiting for an abortion in Scandinavia. And what were the women doing? They were rubbing their abdomen and talking to their baby. This kind of hardwired bonding doesn't go away. The woman who's had an abortion doesn't become unpregnant. She is now the mother of a dead baby that she can't grieve. So I've had miscarriages. 
I've had babies who have died in my womb. And I could grieve them because I knew I didn't do anything to cause their death. But imagine how difficult, how very difficult it would be for a woman to know that she had her baby and she did something to end that baby's life. And she can't go to a miscarriage support group. In fact, she can't talk to anybody about it because the people who are pro-abortion say, oh, there's no law of tissue, you didn't lose anything. Well, she knows full well she lost a child. Who is she going to talk to? And that's why these women use drugs. That's because they're trying to manage a complicated grief. That's why these women commit suicide, because they're sad. It's it's a it's an epidemic of mental health problems that we know are coming from abortion and from complex grief that isn't able to be resolved. And that's something that we need to be sensitive to, especially to women who are very angry about abortion and abortion rights. Because behind those women who are angry about their rights to have an abortion is a woman who is crying is a woman who is grieving and we have to approach her with compassion and with understanding and with forgiveness and with gentleness that's not saying that abortion is a good thing that's recognizing the damage that abortion has done in this woman's life so what she needs is compassion <laughs>